All the time. God is good. Thank God for the youngsters who led the service today. And uh, they are the future church. Amen. Amen. So who are the elders? The youngsters are the future church. So who are the elders? The elders are the example for them now. Amen. They are tomorrow the church. But the elders are today the model for them. What do you do? They are going to follow it up. So don't sleep by thinking, oh, they are the future coming up, coming up. But you have to put the fertile for their building up so that they will grow in the Lord. So today I will speak especially for the youngsters. The message is for the youngsters. And uh, I hope the congregation will bear with me. I will just go completely in English. But uh, I hope you are no problem because you are living in America. And uh, the politicians say people who come to America has to learn English. So you have no excuse. You are all working in public places. So you should be able to follow without trouble. So today's message is the devil wants to eat you alive. The devil wants to eat you alive. This is for the youngsters. So don't think the elders, the devil will just spare you. The devil also wants to eat you alive as elders or youngsters. So for that, I have chosen the passage from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 11. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 11. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To whom be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So the eighth verse says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the title is, Devil Wants to Eat You Alive. There was a young boy studying in a school, his name is CJ. So CJ, after the school, walked down a few streets to go home. So that was his routine. Every time he finished the school and walks down. As he is walking down, he had a habit. He had a basketball in his hand. So he dribbles, put dribbles across the legs and he dribbles and just enjoys walking on the street. So there was a blue house on the way. There was a dog there. So the moment the dog hears the sound, the boy is coming, he started barking and is growling. But this boy never bothered about noticing this dog. So he busy dribbling the ball and going. He was just enjoying his walk. He reaches home. So this dog was angry. Because it was not able to reach him, it started digging a hole under the fence. Whenever he sees this boy is going dribbling the ball on the street, he started digging, digging, digging. 
So after a few weeks, he was happily just dribbling the ball and walking the street. Suddenly, this dog came through the hole outside and started chasing him. Oh, the moment he saw, his eyes were bulging. He was sprinting like a racer and there was a bum on the street. He struck on the bum and fell down and he got scratches. He left the ball and started running for his life. He reached home, shut the door, he opened the window and saw the dog was just tearing down the ball. So the dog's attention was on the ball. He shut the door and the dog did not harm him because he left the because he left the ball. Just keep attentive here. Don't look anything going on around. So the dog took the ball, not the boy. So there is a message here. The dog is the devil. But the boy, if he is going without the ball and his attention was on the road, he knows the dog is growling, so he could have taken care of it. Because his attention was on the ball, he never bothered about somebody who is watching and doing harm to him. <coughs> like that in this life, the youngsters and the elders have many habits of the world. You are not aware. The devil is watching you all the time, wanting to have a opening in your life. So for that boy, the opening was the ball. Like that, our habits of this world makes an opening for the devil to devour you sometime. Because you are not other, you are totally lost in the practices. It can be your cell phone, it can be your TV programs, it can be your relationship with others, it can be anything which is not likable by the Lord. So, this is a story give you some idea about how the devil operates. The devil is interested to devour you. He does not want that you should be happy in this world. But he will bring temptations. Or he may bring dispute with other people and bring anger in your life. Or you may be angry with your teachers. So he brings a situation in you and he will make you to feel that you cannot make a A grade in your school. He will make you feel that my teacher is not good, so I may not be successful. There are many ways he wanted to destroy you. So you have to be careful. So here the word of God gives some characters. It says self-control and alertness. Self-control and alertness in your life is essential. Otherwise, sober life and vigilance. That you have to be always careful about what ever happening in your life, you should be careful. Especially girls, if young boys come and say, hey baby, baby. It is happening in schools. Better be watchful. The devil is roaming around you. Don't respond to them. Keep them away. You have given a beautiful name by your parents. If somebody calls you by name, then respond. Hey, babe, 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 babe. See, they are laughing. They are familiar. Elders are not laughing. So, watchful. That's an enemy which is trying to attract you. It may sound very beautiful because of your age. But understand, that's why you are coming to church. Learn how to fight the evil in your life. Or young people, don't be attracted by the things of the world so that you will be tempted to get money to do things. I want to wear a, what sneakers famous these days or what kind of a dress that I should make. So these are all things worked by the devil 
to attract you. That's why the Bible says you need to have self-control. You need to have alertness. This boy CJ was not alert. Why he was not alert the enemy? He was concentrating on his ball, basketball and dribbling. His full focus was on that. Like that, in which area your alertness is there now? Are you thinking about your studies? Or are you keeping the book in front of you and let your mind go somewhere else? I go through that in days. So sometimes the book will be there, the mind will be roaming around. There are so many things. The tempter, the devil's other name is tempter or he is a liar. And you have to find out who is the devil. If you know him as a liar, then you will escape. They say, identify your enemy. If you don't identify, he will be a snare to you. Like Obama, the politician's talk, he is not identifying the enemy because he is not willing to say Muslim radicals are the enemy. He does not want to say that. He does not want to use the word Muslim. So they say, if you don't identify your enemy, you cannot defeat them. So you should know, devil means liar, he is a tempter, he comes to what, uh, what, what does the book John says? He comes to steal, he wants to kill you and he wants to destroy you. How many of you know devil is a destroyer? You know what you don't know? Devil is a destroyer? <laughs> so you have come to learn here the character of not only God, the character of the devil. Because devil will be a baby. He will be always looking nice sweet and he will say sweet things he will try to say that we can be friends and he will yield completely to you and that will be very attracting in your age but the word of god gives you the holy spirit the word of god gives you the holy spirit so this kind of alertness is not there you will develop a bad relationship you will get into expensive habits. Someone hurts you. You will not be patient to react to them according to the Holy Spirit. You will say something very serious against them. Finally, instead of fighting with spiritual strength, you will start fighting physically. And which damages your life. And in the school, somebody bullies you. You should not react to them in a bullying way. You should come back home. God has given us a weapon. What is that weapon? Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. So when you come back home, you leave it to God. Tell him this is what happening. Because the word of God says, put your cares upon Jesus Christ. Because he cares for you. So bullying is not seen by God. Don't think like that. The devil will say, who is going to fight for you? You have to fight. You say, my Lord is there. He will take care of you. When I go home, I will pray. God will bring an answer to that. See, this is what we come to learn from the word of God. How to react to the world temptations. How to react to a particular situations in your life. You should not yield by your brain. The brain is controlled by the devil. Because we are still in this world. We are hearing all the noises of the world. The advices of the world. The advices which comes from the peers. Who are giving advice according to us. In the Bible there is a story. There was a king. And uh, he had a neighbor country. The neighbor country people came and told him. That we are willing to be your slaves. We want to work for you. You only give us the protection. Don't fight with us. That we will give you all our work. All our energy to you. And we will be friendly with you. So this young king. Called all the elderly persons. From the country. All the elderly persons said. It's good. 
that you be friendly with them so that you will be having advantage and after the elders left he called all his young friends the young friends came and said no your father is like a finger for them to destroy them but to tell them i will be like my hand a wrist coming against you if my father has troubled you little bit i will trouble you more i will not have friendship with you so ultimately what has happened he lost relationship with them the country was destroyed so everywhere the word of god says you should take the counsel of a godly people you should not go and take counsel with your peers in the school amen because the devil will use them to take away that will destroy your life so the prayer is the answer and listen to what god tells you you need to have not only prayer after prayer you have to sit in the presence of god because god tells you something you should be able to listen you should have a listening ears to god many people does not have that they pray like a magic but when god says something they don't listen to what god says they do what they want to do you have to understand that because our god is a living god he is a prayer answering god so when you pray you need to believe that he will answer my prayer how many of you believe when you pray god will answer you when you pray you are asking for something you are not hearing anything from god so that doesn't mean that he is not answering that means he is saying no to you see either he will say no or he will say yes or he will say you wait so you have to understand if he is not telling anything that means you get the answer no so the bible says that you should be self control and you should be alert and you should be sober minded and be vigilant and if you do all these things that you will be succeed never underestimate god god is a mighty god what a mighty god we serve grateful with a grateful heart give thanks with with a grateful heart or to the grateful heart to the or with you sang to the grateful heart but your board said your board said give thanks teacher you didn't teach them properly yeah but what did they say what did you say huh yeah? give thanks to the grateful heart it's not to the grateful heart give thanks with a grateful heart to god hallelujah so every thing we have to watch that's why alertness what do you say it will have its effect see people pray sometimes without knowing what they are asking they just in tamil they say alappuram adavadhu vaayila vandadilla kekkiradha anna rudha blabbering blabbering when they blabber things you get answer blabber answer so you have to be careful you have to think in alertness and when you pray you have to pray to god knowing he is a mighty god he is a sovereign god you don't need to give him information if anything happening in the school before you know god knows and god knows is my child under persecution or bullying so he is ready to answer you he is waiting for you to speak to him in prayer you understand always you trust him don't underestimate god he is mightier than your principal he can make answer for you so parents should be an example for that so for instance i am speaking now i am telling to the parents unless you speak to god your children will not speak to god they have to see you that you are also sitting in the presence of god praying to god and speaking to god and getting answer to god so who are the example parents if parents are not doing don't expect your children will follow that so parents also has a part now
I said, first you have to identify devil is the enemy. And nothing good comes out of him. Nothing. Devil has nothing to offer you. Everything he offers will lead you to destruction. You have to believe that. Second, devil comes to steal. He will come to kill. And he comes to destroy. destroy. You should know that. And he is a father of lies. Devil is a father of lies. So, if he says something, if you listen, what will happen? You will destroy your life. You may not destroy that time. See, he is a schemer. He will take you step by step to the destruction. He will show you goodies and you will be tempted. He will give you sensual pressures. He will show you things which may just give you emotion to you. But nothing is real. He is a liar. That's how he tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. God said, don't touch that fruit. Don't eat that fruit. But he said, it's very attractive for the eyes. Is it attractive for your eyes? Don't go because it's attractive for your eyes. You sit in the presence of God and ask God, is it right for me? The word of God will give you answers. I'm going to show you how it's going to give you answers. Okay, now the characteristics of the devil. The devil prowls. The, what does the Bible say? What did we read? He prowls. Uh, verse 8. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your uh, advisory, the devil prowls around like a warrior. Ah, uh, he king. walks about like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Now, lion, when it goes into the jungle, it goes with a very soft paw. It will not make any noise. It will hide. Have you seen how the lion attacks? So, like. The enemy also comes to you like he is a very nice person, very soft person. You will really know him when he starts attacking you. Till that time, you will see everything will be alright. He will be very pleasing. You have to be differentiate what God's kindness and what the world is just making a show of it. Like the devil, it roars when it starts attacking or the lion will roar so that it will stir up the other animals to run here and there so that it can catch. So it's all tricks of the lion. So the Bible says he prowls like a lion. So the lion prowls for good or bad? Bad. Because it catches you, it will devour you. So this is what the devil will do in your life when he comes very softly, very gently. He will like the angel of light sometime. So you should not be deceived. He will speak very gently. See, there are many love marriages end up in failure. You know why? What they see after marriage is not what they see before marriage. Before marriage, both of them will speak very kind. Both of them will forgive each other very kind. Both of them will offer gifts very generously. So, he will say, I am all for you. She will say, I am all for you. That is before marriage. After marriage, everything will change. What you see before marriage is not true after marriage. Because now you are born together. So he will just don't care about that. So what they see and be deceived before marriage becomes a snare after marriage and they started disliking each other. That's why many love marriages ending with disaster. So don't believe what the other person is saying before marriage. It's all lying. It's not with responsibility. It's all with a sensual lust they have for each other. So the Bible says that's why the enemy is like a devil who is prowling 
how to devour you, destroy you in your life. And the destruction can come not only one way, there are many ways in the world. Through your books, through what you are reading. When you are here, you will have two books. One, your study book. Over that, another book. So when parents come, this will lift like this, look like a textbook. When they go, it goes like this, another books come over it. <laughs> or your internet. There are so many traps in the internet. Or your phone. Service is over. How many of you just immediately take it to your phone and hear itself? After leaving the church building, you take your phone, it's okay. Service is over, your hand goes to the pocket and takes your phone. That's enemy's trick. You cannot even just hold for five minutes without that phone. That's why enemy phones away, like the ball, basketball. He was dribbling the basketball. Is there any harm? Dribbling the basketball, no harm. But because of dribbling, what has happened? His alertness. His alertness and concentration was not around. He was totally himself with the ball. And he didn't know the dog is waiting. It's digging a hole to approach it. So when you are not attentive to what is happening around, devil is working somewhere. So be attentive. Don't just give yourself to the cell phones or anything. Now, uh, Paul gives some ideas how to overcome all these things. So we have to just do it, what Paul says. Turn your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, and in faith and security. What does it say? Let no one despise you for your youth. Ah, uh, for your youth. So youth. Because you are young, that is no excuse that you should be more alert. Here, for Timothy, Paul is writing. Paul is writing to a young pastor. Timothy is very young. But he has a great responsibility. So never think that because you are young, that you cannot take a big responsibility. He is having a great responsibility to lead a church. But Paul is giving advice because you are young. Don't take that you are young as a snare for your life. You have to be careful with five things here it says. In your conduct, in your love, in your speech, in your spirit and in your faith. If you hold all these things, your word means your speech. How you respond to a situation. You have to be very concentrating your reply by giving yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit what you speak if somebody is angry with you will you answer with an angry response anger to anger will flash sword to sword will flash with a fire and it will destroy both so your speech is very important your contact in a particular situation, how you are conducting yourself, that is very important. Don't abruptly conduct yourself by hearing something. Just give some time to think how you can react because you have to remember that you are not the world, you are a child of God. So there is a way that how you conduct your life and you have to do it in love and in spirit and in faith. So, people may criticize you for being young, if you take a responsible job. But don't bother about that, what they are telling. But be an example to them, so that their mouth will be shut. 
If you do wrong things, they have the right to criticize you. But if you are a model, they cannot criticize you for a long time. They have to take back their word. They have to submit to you, though you are young. So word or speech. Now, speech and behavior is an outward thing, what they see, what you do. What you speak, they can see. How you behave, that's an outward expression. But the three things, the other three things, what is that? Uh, the uh, love, spirit and faith are the internal expressions. So how you react internally will bring out the external appearance. So you have to grow in your inner man. That's what the Bible says. If your inner man is not right, if there is no faith there, if there is no love there, if it's not filled with the spirit, your outer expression and your outer speech will be related to that. It will bring more trouble. The devil, this is, these are all the points where the devil can enter into your life and destroy your character. So you have to build up your character. Uh, About behavior, there was a story. I don't know whether it really happened or not. Passion. When Jesus was crucified, they made a picture called Passion. How many of you have seen the picture Passion? So, this is a drama. In a school, the Passion was playing in the school. So there was a guy who was playing as the Jesus character. So in the Jesus character he has to carry the cross and he has been beaten by the people and he was seriously acting like Jesus. That time from the crowd one young fellow started tormenting him, started using bad word against him. He was just sitting there and teasing him. So this man, he is carrying cross, acting as Jesus. He was hearing that sometime he controlled and he could not control anymore because he continuously taunting, shouting against him and making fun of him. So suddenly he threw the cross and jumped out and ran to this fellow and kicked him. Then came back and said, sorry, 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 they put the cross. So the director called him and said, if you behave like this, I'll fire you from the school. Better be careful because the play has to continue next day. So next day again he took the cross. He was acting like Jesus. And this guy again came. He started taunting him. <laughs> now he was so angry, he said, let my resurrection is over, I'll come and take care of you. <laughs> so, our behavior should not be like that. The world may taunt us, the world may criticize us, the world may talk evil about us, because we are following Jesus Christ. But you should not worry about that, you should let the vengeance be taken by God. You should leave it to God. He will take care of you. Don't underestimate God. When He touches, when God touches, that's it. You know there is a story in the Bible. Jeroboam, there is a king. And he was doing wicked things. God sent a prophet to him. So the prophet came and said, the altar on which you are standing, it will burst. And you will go down on the altar. So this king said, the soldiers, come on, come on, catch him. So when he stretched out his hand, his hand did not come back. It's in the Bible. The stretched hand stood stretched. So he had to call the prophet, please prophet, come and pray for me so that I can take my hand back. So when God acts, 
Don't think that will be just easy. So leave your concern to God that He will take care of it. So second thing is you have to set an example in love. You have to set an example in love. First your behavior, your speech and your action should be in love. Set an example in love. Already I have told the story about that. There was some salesman went for a conference. When the conference is over, they had to go back to Chicago. So they were going to the airport rushing, all the salesmen, because the flight time has come. So as they were running, there was a lady who was keeping apples on a cart. So these guys hit the apple cart and they were running for the plane. So all of them ran, but one man stood there and he came back and he told this lady, I'm sorry, this apple which are destroyed, I will pay for it. And the rest of the apple he collected and gave. And he gave some money to this woman and said, you take care of it. And later he found out she was blind. So as he was moving, that lady asked, are you Jesus? Because of the loving action. So what do you talk, what do you show forth by your behavior, the people will see Jesus in you. Have you ever realized that? Some people may speak, some people may not speak. That's what the thief on the cross that he has seen. One man, he did not see the kind of heart which is in Jesus Christ. Even though he was on the side of him. But the man on the other side, though he was on the cross, he saw the difference in Jesus. They say what he would have seen must be Isaiah 53, already promised, prophecy that your God is going to be crucified on the cross. So when he was crucified as a thief, he was looking at Jesus and Jesus looked different to him. He is telling to the other thief, we are being punished for we deserve that. But this man, he has not done anything. See, that is a realization that we should get. And when it gets, we have to speak. This man, he did not realize. The moment he realized, he said, I know that you are come from God. Today you remember me when you are in paradise. See, all he could see just on the cross because his heart was honestly seeking him. Is it your life? Have you realized that Jesus died for you? Have you really realized Jesus died for your sins? Hallelujah. If you really focus on that, your heart will move. You will see the prophecies in the Bible and accept. Yes, Lord, this is you. There is no one else who has fulfilled all these things. So your character is built on these things. Now, set an example in faith. James said, faith without work is dead. That means the faith you are having should make you to work. It is not faith and work. It is a faith which moves you to work. Faith and work is not he is talking. The faith you have has to make you to work and show that faith outwardly through your behavior. Is your faith is showing out through your works? If you are a God's child, your behavior should show that you are God's child. Is your behavior showing? Not only here in the church, but in the school where you are, or in the market where you are. Many times, the problem with Christians is they speak faith, but their actions does not show. 
that man who was running, everybody, the plane was very important that he has to catch the plane. He should not miss. He has a real reason. Everybody has a real reason because the plane is about to leave. They have to catch the plane. But one man stood back. He said, let me miss the plane. I'll take the next flight. Why not all of them think like that? Because everybody's mind is set on their approach, their flight. They have to reach home soon. But this man sacrificed because he saw the, the condition of this woman. That she was struggling with all the apples around. So, how do we react in this world makes a witness to others? That's what he is telling, who Peter is telling, Paul is telling, that we have to be example in this world. Whoever is watching you should know that you are a different person, that you are not like others. They will come to ask you, like this blind lady said, Are you Christ? Are you Jesus? Why she asked? Because there was no one to help her in that situation. But there is somebody who came not only collecting the apples, but whatever is damaged, this man was giving the money which was damaged. For the damage they have done, he was willing to pay for it. So exactly like this, in this life, that when we are walking around, the devil is like a roaring lion, that he is roaring and he is waiting whom he will devour. He is a liar. He is a thief. And he is a father of lies. When he speaks lies, the Bible says he speaks of his own. He creates lying stories because his aim is to destroy everybody. But as children of God, how you are confronting him? If you identify your enemy, you can be able to stand against him. Like CJ, he did not identify the enemy because he was fully occupied with a ball that he was dribbling. How your life? Are you alert? Are you alert in your life? When you are going, you are watching these days. The government also says, when you go, see something, say something. What does it mean? See something, say something. Be alert. When you are suspecting something, be alert and speak about it. Call the police. So, don't be yielding to the temptations. See, that's why you will be succeeded. If you are yielding to your uh, temptation, you will become a victim. Whereas if you react to the suspicion and alert the right people, you will be the victim. You want to be a victim or a victim? You want to be a victim or a victim? Yes. Hallelujah. If you want to be a victim, you have to be sober. Sober means what? Do not drunk with wine. That is what soberness. But as young children, you are not drunk with wine. You are drunk with telephone. You are drunk with your iPhone. You are drunk with your text messages. You are drunk with the small, what is that called? Twitter. You are drunk with your Facebook messages. Some people are addicted with photos. There, there's no end. If you are giving an album or a Facebook, they will not move from that place. Not half an hour, one hour. They are willing to sit for two hours, but give them a Bible to read within five minutes. So, being drunk means, there are so many things people are being drunk in this world. What is your attention? What is your concentration? That's why he here says, be alert, sober. Don't get drunk with the things which the devil brings in your life. He is very subtle. Subtle means the lion 
comes like with a paw. It will not make a noise. Have you ever seen the lion or tiger which approaches? No noise. Even the cat which comes like that. So your house also has enemies. You have to be careful, your neighbor. When you are young, everybody will speak very nicely to you. Don't trust everybody. There are many cases which has been reported in police, has been conducted by the relatives, uncles and aunts, for violence. Because they do everything, because they have a confidence around us in the family. They are not worthy for the confidence. Don't trust everybody who are coming to say good things. First you have to examine. I think uh, already I told you Romans chapter 16. to be wise in bad or good? Good. He wants to be wise in good. Uh. And innocent as to what is evil. Innocent as it's an evil. See, he's telling when it's evil, you be innocent, don't bother about it. But when it's good, you be wise examining that. What does it mean? You don't need to examine an evil person. A drunkard is coming. No need to examine him. You know already his behavior will show you. But somebody will come like a lamb with a wolf outward. No, no. Wolf with a lamb outward. It looks good. Lamb looks good. But what is inside? Wolf. So you have to be wise examining that. When it's evil, the wolf is coming. Open wolf. You know it's evil. You will be protecting yourself. There is no need for special attention. You will keep yourself away. But when it looks like a lamb and the wolf is inside, you have to be wise in differentiating that. That's what it says. Be wise for good, but be simple for evil. You have to be very careful in understanding these things. So, in this passage we have seen the devil is like a Roaring lion, but he will come very subtle. He will come in your life without your knowledge how he is approaching you. He will come in your life as a very sweet person or a sweet situation or a thing which you like to hear now, but you have to always examine with an alert mind, with a sober mind what the Word of God says. If you are following according to the word of God, you will never be deceived. Otherwise, there is always a chance that he will deceive you and he will deceive you for destroying you. He will deceive you for killing you. He will deceive you so that he will steal you. So now you have to make a choice in your life that you have to be sober. Your speech should be sober. When you reply to a person, you should be kind. 
you should not reply as they are speaking with rough language. You don't need to use rough language. You have to be speaking the words which comes out of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit answer is very powerful. Don't think it is very easy. They can escape. It will cut. It's a two-edged sword. God's word is like a two-edged sword. If anybody comes to attack you, it will cut them in pieces. Use the word of God. He has the answer for everything. So as young people, be alert. But as elder people, you be the model now. Because what you do, they are following you. So be obedient to the call of the Lord. The God has trained you and taught you and brought you all this way. That you should be obedient to His teaching. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Our precious Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord. You have given us this wonderful time that we were able to meditate your word. Let the word of God stay in their hearts, Father. Stay in our hearts. And what the Spirit of God is telling us, that we will be able to follow. Lord, give us always the wisdom and knowledge how to face this world so that we will be conquerors, we will be victors, we will not be victims in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Does anybody has a song? Sister, you can sing a song.